Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. Today we're talking about, from an infield perspective, do we want to bring the ball to the middle and funnel the ball on a ground ball, or do we want to work through it and push through it with our glove? I get this question an awful lot. A lot of people debate it. I've made a couple of other videos on this topic, but I want to talk again because I continue to get questions on it. I want to give you a bunch of reasons why it is that we teach what we do. And for me, we teach both ways, right? It depends a little bit on the hop. We're going to get into that. But the majority of the time, we're teaching to funnel the ball to the middle of our body, okay? We do that for a couple reasons. One, if I were to just throw you a ball and you were just to catch the ball, right? Not on the ground, just catch it. You would always just receive the ball, right? Someone throw it to me here, I catch it. I catch it. I catch it. I would never push through the ball, right? The ball's already coming fast at me. There's no reason for me to do this. I'm going to catch the ball securely more often if I just catch it versus if I do that, okay? If someone were to throw me a ball and I were to turn my glove over, so we're not talking a ground ball, just somebody were to do this to me, right? Just underhand the ball really fast at me right about here. I would never, again, if I wanted to secure this, I would never do that, right? So let's say you're turning a double play as a second baseman or a shortstop and they throw the ball low. Would you ever do that to turn a double play? No, you wouldn't. Your, your success rate of catching that ball or deflecting that ball into your hand would not be very high versus if you just catch the ball and bring it to the middle, okay? So that's the first thing. All, any ball that's caught anywhere is going to be caught with soft hands and then brought to the middle and transferred. So why all of a sudden when the ball is on the ground should we push through it? For me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you think about really good infielders at the major league level, the best infielders in the world, when people watch them, when you watch a good infielder, what do, you, what do people say about their hands? Right? They might say they've got great feet, but what do they talk about when they talk about their hands? They almost always say, man, guys got soft hands, right? Got quick hands, got soft hands. Soft hands for me is when the ball feels like it never stops moving. Here comes the ball, I receive it, I funnel it to the middle, and I throw it, right? To me, this is soft hands. This is not soft hands, right? And so... Again, it goes back to receiving the ball and being able to deflect it more often than not. But also, it's just about aesthetically, too, looking at it. It looks softer, smoother. You see major league guys do it. You very rarely, if I turn on a major league game, I'll very rarely see a guy push through the ball. The only time they do it again is what we're going to talk about in a minute is to create a short hop. But a routine ground ball, a long hop, or a ball on the ground... The ball is brought to the middle. Soft hands, quick hands, okay? Let's talk about now when do you want to push through the ball or pinch through the ball. I call it pinching through the ball. For me, the only time you'll see it, the only time you want to do it, is when you're trying to create a short hop, all right? So there's different hops that you can get. You can get the long hop where the ball bounces way out there, you see the big hop, here it comes, and you feel it, okay? You can get a ball just on the ground, right? No hops. Here comes the ball, I put my glove down, I bring the ball in the middle, and I throw it, okay? You can get a short hop. A short hop is one of those balls that bounces right before your glove, right? So it's going to bounce right here, right before it gets into my glove. Almost no room between the ball and my glove. And you can get the in-between hop. And that's in between the short and the long. It's somewhere right out there. Those are the ones that kind of eat you up. Kind of feel like you get on your heels. They come up. They hit you off the chest. A lot of times players will blame the infield. Man, this infield stinks. Right? But it's usually just because you didn't pick out a good hop. Got the in-between hop. Now, it's the infielder's job to pick the right hop. So I want to field. If the ball's on the ground, I don't have to pick a hop. Right? It's just roll on the ground. I just field it. 
But if the ball is bouncing, I want to feel the long hop, the one that bounces out there, or the short hop, the one that barely bounces before my glove. Because nothing can go wrong when the ball bounces right before my glove. And nothing can go wrong when the ball bounces way out there and I can see this big hop and I feel it. Where it goes wrong is on those in-between hops because I'm stuck and I can't read that hop. Right? I don't have enough room. Right? And so I'm reading it all the time. I'm moving my feet and I'm trying to pick a good hop. Now, let's get back to when do I push through the ball. I want to push through the ball or pinch through the ball when I'm trying to turn that in-between hop into a short hop. All right? So, ball's going to bounce in between. If I just sit back and feel it like normal, I'm going to get an in-between hop. It's going to be difficult to feel. So what I do is I step up and I try to shrink that distance down and I turn that in-between hop into a short hop by working through the ball. It can be backhand, it can be forehand, it can be two hands, right? But that's what I'm going to work through the ball because I'm trying to shrink the distance of the hop, okay? If I don't have to do that, if it's going to already be a long hop, or it's going to be a short hop, or it's on the ground, I simply feel the ball, bring the ball to the middle, set my feet up, and throw. Okay? Any position you watch, catcher, outfield, pitcher, they bring the ball to the middle. So I bring the ball to the middle. Any ball I feel comes to the middle, I break my hands there. The one thing that I will hear from coaches is that they'll, they'll say, now some coaches are really adamant. They want you to push through everything, right? I see a lot of young players, particularly, push through everything. And the, the reason that I hear a lot is, well, we want to play through the ball, right? We want to get going towards first base. We want momentum and all that. And that's fine. But you create that with your feet, in my opinion. So I can work through the ball with my feet and still bring the ball to the middle. I don't have to push through it to get me to work through the ball, all right? So it's a footwork thing. If somebody's not playing through the ball, in my opinion, it's not because they're, I don't tell them to push through it anymore. I tell them to get to the right of the ball, get their momentum going, use your feet. Go we'll pick up the right hop, but get your feet going towards first base, okay? Not the hands or the upper body. So that's one thing that I do hear a lot from people. They'll say, you can't bring the ball here, you're not gonna play through it. I just use my footwork. Again, I always say turn on Major League Baseball and watch how they're fielding it. In my opinion, that's how they do it. I play with five different professional organizations, and it's interesting. Every single one of them taught the same way, bring the ball to the middle. Now, I'm not saying just because of that, that's the right way to do it, but I'm just saying it's interesting that all five taught that way. You turn on TV, you watch the best in fields in the world, and pretty much all of them do that, right? And... Uh, if you go watch a lot of younger kids play, you'll see more pushing through again. Now, one more thing. When I'm bringing them all to the middle of my body, how do I bring it to the middle of my body? This is important. So, when I feel the ball, I'm not going to just bring the ball in here with my elbows tucked in. I see some players try to do that. I feel the ball, and when I feel it, I should be, I'm not going to be, 12 and 6, I'm going to be slightly off center, ever so slightly off center. When I get the ball, as I start to bring it to the middle, I turn thumb up. Right? So both my thumbs get up, my elbows go out. So now I can easily bring the ball to the middle of my body, break my hands and throw. Okay? If my elbows stay in and I'm 12-6, I can't bring the ball to the middle of my body. My elbows get in the way. Right? So I approach the ball. I feel the ball, I go elbows out, thumbs up, and now the ball never stops, right? Ball comes in, it's deflected, it never stops. Soft hands, quick hands. That's hard hands to me, right? And when I do that too, I almost feel like I get thrown off balance a little bit. Just doesn't feel natural. Now again, I've always brought the ball kind of to the middle of my body as a player, so that could be why. But if I'm trying to have soft, quick hands and get to the point where I can break in the middle of my body, the best way for me to do it, in my opinion, again, is bring the ball to the middle, funnel the ball. Thumbs up, elbows out, 
and throw. Hopefully that makes sense. I know some people might not agree. And uh, again, if you don't, that's perfectly fine. I'm just telling you kind of what I've seen, what I see the best players doing, um, and what I found helps out our guys the most. So let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. Share the video with all your friends. All that good stuff. We'll talk to you later.